It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, integrity. honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, self and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. You know, have you ever listened to the intro that plays here? It's about the restoration of our republic. It's about your life, liberty, freedom, right to own property, right to be you, to, to be safe and secure in your person, in your home, and in your effects. The right to live independent of government oppression and tyranny. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're facing every single day. By an elitist group who sits there and gives themselves everything that they want at your expense and your loss. Congress has exempted themselves from Obamacare. The president has given them a, 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 a beneficial break. You, as taxpayers, are going to subsidize them from anywhere between five to $11,000 a year per rep. Not only per rep, but all of their staff and all of the aides, every federal employee who works on Capitol Hill or for anyone on Capitol Hill is all going to get it a subsidy paid for by you. You know, I got to tell you, that stinks to high heaven. And it should have every American up in arms about it. We're going to talk this segment about the Muslim terrorists who are crossing our U.S. border. And how ICE has released 2,837 convicted sex offenders who are also illegal aliens back into our society so that the wolves can ravage the sheep. It's usually assumed by most people that the illegals who are caught crossing the border are South Americans, either Mexican or they're from South America proper, Bolivia, Uruguay, you know, whatever, right? Peru. Argentina. But this, um, there was a group of folks that went out and pulled the detention center records near Phoenix, Arizona. And you know what they found? That the people who are coming across the border are salted with a group of other folks. You know where they're from? Afghanistan. Egypt. Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, Sudan, Yemen. Now, that list reads like a who's who of jihadi terrorists. And there's a former congressman from Arizona whose name is J.D. Hayworth. He, he came out in an interview that's linked on this story, and you can go and watch the video yourself. He says, there are definitely people out there who mean to do us harm who have crossed that border. There's a rancher who's shown holding a Muslim prayer rug on his property, and he says, this is a good indicator that there's a whole lot of people other than just Mexicans coming into the United States. The American public has been kept in the dark about this whole issue. He's a former Border Patrol. This guy's name is Dave Stoddard. He's a former Border Patrol agent with 20 years of experience on the border. Here's the problem. They come from Europe and they get into South America easily. Then they just come north and they cross our border. The the problem with this is, folks, is that and and if you've watched enough of our shows, you know that one of the things I say all the time is that the real purpose that the border is left open is really not a humanitarian effort. The real reason the border is being left open is so that you will have 
uh, or I shouldn't say you. Let me let me let me start the argument again. The real reason the border is left open is so that these jihadis can enter the country and give credibility and credence and life and reasons for life and reasons for living to the anti-terror surveillance state, the massive development of these organizations that are monitoring everything about you when these people commit atrocities. They know, and they've already concluded, that you're, you, as collateral damage, are an acceptable price to pay for them to gain complete control. I'm telling you right now that I don't care whether or not you can find empirical proof to that for that reason or not. There is no other conclusion that can be drawn. I defy you. I challenge you. I'm asking you. I'll beg you. Find me another plausible explanation to tell me why we can solve and seal the border between North and South Korea, which we've held tight enough to keep, as, a, as a gnat's butt for the past 60 years, but we can't close our own border. I'm telling you why it is. It is so that when terrorist attacks occur, and they will occur, the, the infrastructure for the anti-terror organizations have plausible exist uh, or plausible reasons for their existence. And they have already concluded that the collateral damage that will be sustained by the nation is small enough and low enough that it doesn't really matter because all it will do is fire up the people to say, we demand a solution. And the Hegelian dialectic is in full run. What is that? If you don't know, go look it up. It's the Hegelian dialectic. Now, the concept of it is very simple. It's create a crisis, wait until the people start screaming, then give them a solution that always comes with the derogation of their freedoms and liberties. And it all works towards closing the pinchers of the terrorist police state. Always. And all you got to do is look around you and see how many times it's happened in the past. And it doesn't just take terror. It does. It's not just terrorism. It's all this other crap too. It's the Obamacare concept. It's all these executive orders the government's passing. It's Monsanto and the and the the the, the freebie that they were just given again to uh, be uh, to avoid not only the courts, but even legislation when their product has been proven dangerous to the health and safety and welfare of Americans. I mean, I don't know of any other example in history in which an individual corporation has been given a free ride, separated from legislative sanction or, or, or um, prohibitions, and criminal and civil. In other words, when Monsanto's products are proven to be dangerous, you don't have any recourse. The legislative can't block them. You don't have a, an opportunity to file a criminal charge against them, and you don't have an opportunity to file a civil charge against them. That puts Monsanto outside the law criminally or civilly. And it puts them outside the law so that even legislators cannot change the plan. Even though everyone knows the products are harmful and labeling hasn't been allowed, so you can't even tell what's in your food anymore. Don't you smell it? I mean, look, I give you guys examples of all this stuff every single day. And I got to wonder why you're not sharing and telling and, and speaking out. I got to wonder where you are. I got to wonder what's in your head. I got to wonder what's in your heart. I got to wonder what are you doing? Am I talking to the wall here? The pinchers are being closed on us. Muslim terrorists are coming across our border with full knowledge and approval of your own government. And you are sitting there saying, well, you know, they, it's such a big border. I, I, I got to agree. I don't know how they could seal it and close it. I got to question your sanity. I got to question your patriotic motivation. I got to question Congress, your state, all of your elected representatives, where are they on these issues? Where are you? 
going to wait until they come and just tell you you cannot leave your home until someone comes to get you? You're going to wait until they can kick your door in with legal approval of what? SCOTUS? The traitors up at the Supreme Court? Five justices who make the rules with no recourse? You're going to wait until Obamacare knows so much about you that there's nothing that you have that they don't already know about? Nothing you possess, nothing you think, nothing that's happened in your historical life? I mean, please, what are you waiting for? Well, I don't know what to do. I'm only one person. Stop watching me and start helping me. You're supposed to be fighting with me. You're supposed to be helping. You're supposed to be speaking and writing and talking. You're supposed to be filing and and writing petitions. Educating those around you daily. What are you doing for our cause? Or are you just sitting there and gnashing your teeth in the darkness alone? It's too much risk. Well, then I guess you're just not worthy. You're not worthy of that which we're actually fighting for, that which you yourself even believe. If you're not willing to know that there's a problem and then stand up and take action, then I guess you're just not worthy. You're not worthy of the freedoms and the liberties that you've experienced and known all your life. You're not worthy of that which our founders gave to us. You're not worthy of those friends and neighbors who believe that you're a patriot and a hard-working, trustworthy individual. Because when, the, when, when push comes to shove, you'll join the rat revolution. No, I won't. I will never do that. Okay. That's what you say now. But when the gun is pointed at you, when the judge's gavel is pointed at you, You're going to turn on us. I know it. I've seen it. I've smelt it. I've felt it. I'm telling you. I know. You're going to turn. Yes, this is going to make some people angry. But I'm asking you, why are you not willing to, to support and help? Why are you not willing to speak out? Why are you not willing to play your own part in this? Because you're afraid? If that's, if that's your biggest concern, that something will be taken from you or you'll be penalized or prosecuted or persecuted, what are you going to do when the real persecution and prosecution start? See, that's how I know you'll become part of the rat brigade. Because you're unwilling to fight now when fighting is easy and costs nothing. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement has just released 2,837 convicted criminal alien, illegal alien sex offenders back into American communities to comply with a Supreme Court decision. If that's not stunning news, if that's not the kind of thing that will make you sit up and take notice. The wolves have been released into the herd and into the flock. 2,837 sex offenders, which is a total of 5% of all of the 60,000 deportable aliens that have been released from detention, were released on Thursday. I'm sorry, the report was released on Thursday. There are circumstances, quote, There are circumstances in which criminal aliens who have been ordered removed from the United States, including those convicted of sex offenses, cannot be removed. What? 
See, this goes back to my earlier statement <clears throat> that your wife and your children are acceptable collateral damage. How do I know that? Well, because they just released 2,837 sex offenders back into the fold, back into the flock. And everyone knows that some percentage of those people are going to recommit and reoffend. So they made a decision that said the collateral damage that will occur as a result of releasing 2,800 convicted, proven sex offenders back into society, the children who will be raped, the women who will be raped, the men who will be raped, is acceptable collateral damage in our war against our own countrymen. There is no other method, no other way, no other plausible way to look at this. It's acceptable for 2,837 convicted sex offenders to get back into the society and rape and damage and injure again. That's fully acceptable. You are acceptable collateral damage. Your wife, your children, they're okay with your daughter being raped by an adult male. You know that little girl who comes home from school on the bus and she jumps off the bus and she runs to you and says, Daddy, Daddy, hello, I'm so happy to see you. They're okay with some monster having their way sexually with your daughter. Imagine her mindset. Imagine your little boy raped and what's going through his mind. Where's my daddy? Where's my mommy? Oh, my God. What is this man doing to me? And they've allowed it. And you've allowed it. If that does not flare your temper to the top of your skull, you should be removed yourself. You cannot give me a rationale, a plausible, acceptable excuse why you would allow 2,837 repeat sex offenders to be released into the public of the United States of America who have already broken our law by violating our borders, then violated the law by raping our citizenry, and you are going to allow them back into our country as acceptable collateral damage. America, where are you? What are you thinking? You ICE agents, where is your oath? Where is your oath? How dare you? Unlock that chain, unlock that gate, and allow these monsters back into our society. I don't care how many you're caught again. I care how many aren't caught. This, if this doesn't prove to you the insanity of the politically correct thinking, the leftist concepts of judgment and morality, I don't know what does. Every American should be on fire over this incident. 
And this isn't the first time it's happened. You see, you are nothing more than food for a bloated bureaucracy, for a bloated group of elitists, statists, and frankly monsters who think that it's acceptable for you and your children and your family members and your nieces and your nephews to be fodder for predators. Those children's who, who, children whose lives will be ruined, how many? How many? I'm telling you. You see, this is what is wrong with you and us and this whole situation. According to the data from ICE, this is a GAO report, of 4,359 alien sex offenders who were removed from the country between January and August of 2012 alone, that's eight months, 220 of them, fully 5%, had previously been removed but subsequently returned to the United States and were arrested for a second offense. That's 220 children we know about who were raped. Penetrated by a dirty, skeeving, nasty, filthy, polluted animal. That's your daughter. That's your son. That's 220 we know about. How many untold hundreds, perhaps thousands, are there? This is the government you choose. This is the government that you want. This is acceptable to you. Get out of my face. If you will not take action on this issue, don't ever watch this program again. Go back and find some sitcom to watch. Because we got nothing further to discuss. You're listening to America's Voice now. My name is Michael Evans. I am one very, very angry patriot. This is treason against humanity. We're going to return in a moment with our last segment. It's all about what Lois Lerner knew in the IRS. God, it just piles up. I mean, it's not piling up a little at a time like snow. It's piling up like it's pouring out of the back of a dump truck. In America, you're just sitting there, taking it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 